Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. And salute to my guy Tristan Walker and the team at Bevel for sponsoring this week's episode of the Brilliant Idiots. They are bringing you the first and only shaving system designed for coarse curly hair and sensitive skin. Check out GetBevel.com today and use code FREEIDIOTS to get the first month of your Bevel subscription for free. F-R-E-E. That means no excuses, no more Nestle Crunch Bar necks, no more Bunch of Crunch chins. Just step up your shave game, start shaving smarter, and say goodbye to Razor Bumps with Bevel, okay? Stevie Wonder will not use the back of your neck to read as long as you get that <laughs> This show is also brought to you by Wendy's. That's right. Okay, Wendy's. Right now, I'm not talking to everyone. Listen, I'm just talking to you. That's because Wendy's Jalapeno Fresco Spicy Chicken Sandwich is so flavorful and so hot. It's not for everyone. It's for you, okay? We tried it, and we love it. Okay, delicious. It's spicy. Remember, my tongue, my tongue has the Scottish, uh, whatever that calls, food. What is it when you taste something? Yeah, and people... Taste buds. Yeah, Scottish taste buds, okay? But I, I went for it. Delicious. And people swear we don't be eating Wendy's, especially me. They be like, yo, you be eating all healthy. I, it's a thing called cheat meals, bro. Cheat day, baby. Okay? The jalapeno fresco spicy chicken sandwich is only available for a limited time at participating Wendy's, so go and get yours today. Okay? We got some some good news. We got some uh, Brilliant Idiots live shows coming up. June 30th, NYC. We're going to be performing at the Tribeca Pack Theater. Um, you can get it at tickets.tribecapack, that's P-A-C dot org slash The Brilliant Idiots, or just go to their website and cop tickets. And those tickets are going to be available 10 a.m. this coming Sunday. That's May, what is it, 15th? So yep. 10 a.m., Sunday, May 15th, those tickets go on sale. Get those, gobble those up real quick. Another Brilliant Idiots live show is going to be in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, at uh, The Ohio State University. That's going to be um, 8-27. It's open to the public August 27th. And those tickets will also be available this Sunday, 10 a.m. And the ticket link for that is idiotslive slash brownpapertickets.com. So you can get tickets for both those shows. Gobble those up real quick. Um, yeah, man. Charlotte, man, you excited to do some more Brilliant Idiots Live? Absolutely. June 30th. That's the day after my born day, actually. So it's going to be a birthday celebration, Brilliant Idiots Live. For sure. And we might have, you know, some interesting guests. It's our hometown. It's New York City. We got a lot of people there. We might NYC, bring somebody out. baby! Absolutely. Uh, also, I got some stand-up shows coming up. Um, May 20th and 21st, I'm going to be at the Improv in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So come through for that. Uh, May 27th and 28th, I'll be at Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas, Texas. June 26th, Atlanta, Atlanta Comedy Theater. I'm going to be there. Atlanta, you've been asking for a show, so I got one. So come on out, the Atlanta Comedy Theater. Um, of the uh, the 22nd through the 24th, I'll be in Raleigh, or Raleigh, how you pronounce that shit? Raleigh, Raleigh. North Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina at uh, Charlie Goodnight's Comedy Club. That's right, North Carolina. All these other people boycott in your state. I'm not. I'm coming, okay? <laughs> so if you had Bruce Springsteen tickets, you can't see him, you come see me. That's uh, July 22nd through 24th. Um, July 27th. I'm going to be at the Improv in Houston, Texas, one day only. Uh, and then uh, August 3rd through 6th, I'll be in Amsterdam. Uh, August 12th, I'm going to be at the Brokerage in Belmore, New York. That's Long Island. In Long Island, I'll be at the Brokerage Comedy Club in Belmore, New York. Um, the 14th of August, I'm going to be at the Comedy Factory in Baltimore. Okay? So make sure you come out to those shows. I really appreciate you guys for coming out. Thanks a lot. Okay. Perfect. Now, let's start the show. Let's go. Big day for you yesterday. Um, we had a good time, man. Big day. Big day. We had a good time. Tell them. I did the Colbert show, the late the late show with Stephen Colbert this week. I mean, that was big for me because, you know, Stephen Colbert is from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel like in life in general, mm -hmm. everybody is always trying to find evidence to build a case of optimism. Because we can all get so bogged down in this world we mm -hmm. all need motivation mm -hmm. you know it's easy to be pessimistic but i always tell myself pessimism never won any battle so me coming from a dirt road mm -hmm. monk's corner south carolina looking around at, at 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 life when i see somebody like stephen colbert who's from james island which isn't far from monk's corner at all berkeley yeah. high school just high school i went to used to play them in football when i see somebody like him you know grow to the levels he's grown to it it, it helps me build a case of optimism because before that we had andy dick that was from South Carolina. That'll make you pessimistic as a motherfucker. Yeah. Who yeah, the fuck yeah. wants to be Andy Dick? Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. Steve Colbert, 
Come on, bro. Yeah. Crazy. Huge. Crazy. Huge. And I, and I revealed a story on Colbert show that my cousin Kente, salute to Kente. Kente reminded me of the day before. Kente called me. He was like, yo, you're going to be on Colbert show tomorrow. I said, yeah. He goes, you remember Mr. Colbert? I said, yeah, from middle school. Because, you know, you, everybody got those teachers yeah. that people remember because they were just cool. Mr. Yeah, Colbert yeah. was just cool. I remember one time him and a bunch of the other teachers came to school with their clothes on backwards and they did crisscross jump at the pep rally. Okay, yeah. He used to have glasses. My wife was actually in his class in seventh grade. He did seventh grade social studies. He used to always talk about having this uh, uh, big mouth bullfrog. Yeah, yeah. So I just, everybody knew Mr. Colbert. He was just a cool teacher. Yeah. He was like, yo, that's his brother. And I'm like... Oh, it's not. His name's Colbert, you fucking idiot. Not yeah. Colbert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But then he was like, no, that's his brother. So now Google. And I'm like, that is his brother. This motherfucker Stephen Colbert's up here putting a little French accent on his name. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be fancy for television. It was funny. I don't okay? know if, if everybody saw it, but there was a really funny moment where you go, uh, where you called him out on being bougie. Right, he yeah. goes, yeah, I see you, Mr. Colbert, but you change your name to Colbert, all fancy. And then he goes, okay, Charlemagne. Charlemagne, Colbert is French, and Charlemagne is French. Who's fancy now? What the fuck is up with South Carolina and France? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, what the hell happened? But no, nah, that was a good moment, man. It was wild, man. It was cool seeing you up there. You crushed that shit. I mean, I'm just doing me. That's the funny part. Everybody else around you puts more pressure on you than you. It's like... Yeah, well, I knew you didn't have any pressure after the first interview when we were watching the first interview. I didn't care. Like, <laughs> show, 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 show. Let's be clear, let's be clear, let's be clear. This is what we do. Yeah, I'm not course. trying to sound cocky or arrogant. Yeah. We talk for a living. What'd I tell you before you went on? You got I didn't it. say you're going to crush that. I said, I should do what you do. That's it. We're going to do what you do. That's it. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to have a conversation <laughs> with it. Stephen Colbert. Like, yeah. we're just talking. Like, how hard is it to have a conversation? It was great. We're, this is what, we, what y'all tune into every week. Yeah. You listen to me and show to have a conversation. Yeah, it was great. How hard is it to have a conversation? So you, I, didn't, I didn't have no problems. You know, it was interesting. When I, watching from, so I went to it. Uh, I went to watch it live. But watching from the uh, where the people sit in the theater. Yeah. Um, when... They start laughing. You, we can't hear you guys. So I think people at home can hear you. But let's yeah. say you said something funny and Steven try, tried to like tag your funny joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is silent yeah, like for the, the audience. Movie theater. That's the movie theater effect. What do you mean? Like when you're in the movie theater, that's why they tell you be silent. Because if you laugh too hard or oh, oh yeah. shit too much, you yeah. miss something. You miss something. But, imperative to the next but it almost felt as if they cut the audio from you guys. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't pick up the light. I don't know what it was, but I was, and I remember hearing that happen. And I was like, oh shit, I hope that they're not missing a line or something like that. I hope they're not yeah. missing a thing. But, um, you know, obviously, obviously it was fine. Everything worked out, but it was a different experience, you know, watching it from the audiences, watching it from By the way, Schultz live. ate all the craft services. Schultz fucked up the bread and cheese. Oh, he bro. fucked up all the chocolates. Love a okay, good bread in the and green cheese. room. Love a good... <laughs> they literally had everything you can't eat. Your green room... They, it's like they were trying to set you up. Your, your, your yeah. green room was, was tempting you. Like, Natasha Sandy called the Colbert Report and she was like, look... <laughs> I know this motherfucker's nervous. He's gonna get nervous. He's gonna eat some chocolate. He's gonna eat some bread and cheese, but nothing. You didn't touch Dr. it. Sandy made me get a chemical pill last week too really? for Colbert. Yeah, she, for Colbert yeah, specifically. She was like, "Oh no, no, you're going on Colbert. You're getting a chemical pill." I'm like, "No," because when you get chemical pills, you peel. Yeah, literally. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, "No, I might. I can't risk it. It's Friday." All right. I'm not gonna lie, you were glowing. <laughs> glowing, <laughs> baby. That was worth it. Thank you, Dr. Sandy. That glow was worth it, god damn it. When I, when I, so listen, as soon as I post a picture on Instagram and they be like, oh, makeup wearing bitch, I'll be like, yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's not makeup, that's that skin under the skin. Yeah, man, but it was a good look, man. I mean, you know, praise be to God. Great look. It was a blessing. You I really enjoyed it. I, that's my future. What is doing uh, late night? Every time I go on those late night shows, I feel that. Like when I went and did Arsenio. Yeah. When I went and did Colbert. Yeah. I felt it. Yeah. Like it just, it's, it's a, it's, I feel, I feel comfortable out there. There's a certain energy that the late night studios bring. Sure. Like you've been, you know, when you've been there last night, it's just, yes. they all have like a, a similar vibe. Yeah, yeah. There's something about late night talk shows. I just love it. You like do it. What do you mean, Future? You're already doing it. I'm already doing it with Uncommon Sense, but I'm talking yeah. about doing it on that level. Oh, of course, of on course. A major, yeah, yeah. On a major network. Like Absolutely. MTV2 is a major network with his cable, but I'm talking about like, a network, network TV, yeah. you know, be up there with those guys, be in that that conversation when people talk about Carson, Leno, Letterman, yeah. Fallon, Colbert. You, you still got to put Arsenio so, in there. Of course, absolutely. He had a short run, but he was in there. So a lot of people maybe from other countries, they might not be familiar with, with the slot that Colbert holds. Yeah. Colbert is David Letterman's replacement, yeah, 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 who yeah. is, outside of Johnny Carson, the most legendary 
yeah. you know, late night host Absolutely. maybe in history. So w- when you think of, I'm saying for maybe basically people who aren't from like America or don't really, you know, watch late night television, yeah. stuff like that. But like the Colbert is not his show on Comedy Central. This is the late night show. Me personally, yeah. that's my favorite late night host. Him and Kimmel are my favorite but I think Colbert is the most talented person on late night. I think Colbert is the best interviewer. It's Incredible. Funny. Yeah, he posted a tweet that I, I tweeted in January. Yeah, oh, this was a great moment. And, and yeah. I don't know what interview made me do that tweet. It was either the Killer Mike, the D-Ray, or the Elon Musk interview I okay. saw. And I was just like, yo, he's just an incredible interviewer. Yeah. Because no matter who he's interviewing, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. You know? And let's be clear, I love Kick-Ass, right? Yeah, I didn't yeah, get a chance yeah. to meet Chloe, but she was on the show. Yeah, Chloe yeah. was born. All right. Yeah, close. But Steve made it <laughs> interesting. Steve Steve made her feel comfortable, yes. made her feel comfortable. It's yes. really funny because we're in we're backstage, we're watching on the TV, not backstage, we're in the green room watching yeah. the TV, and I see you looking up at the TV and you're watching the Chloe interview and she's kinda getting laughs at like boring stories, and I see you kinda smile. <laughs> 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 and you have that look on your face like, oh, I'm about to rip this shit. <laughs> Wait till I get up on that motherfucker. Let's go. Nah, but it's fun though. I, I really do. I feel like that. I feel like that's 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 my future. That's one of the things I want to do in the future. Like yeah. that's a, a great platform. And let me tell you how much my audience doesn't give. No, I'm not gonna say that. Ninety five percent of my audience gives a fuck and they understand the magnitude of what that was. Mm-hmm. But it's the five percent that makes me laugh. This one dude tweeted me yesterday and goes. This motherfucker got the last slot on Colbert's whack ass show. Now, if you was on the Comedy Central show, then that would have been a good look. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you don't get it, do you? Nope. You don't get it. But you know what's interesting? We grew up on late night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what late night is to us is is the pinnacle of television conversation. Really? Yeah. That is conversation on yeah, television, what absolutely. late night is, right? But as I'm watching this and I'm in that environment, I'm seeing what's going on, part of me, and I'm, I'm excited for you being up there, And but part of me goes, I don't know if Colbert is more famous than Charlamagne. No, stop I'm it. I'm being Knock serious, it no, you're man. Bugging, you're bugging, no, no, you're no, no, no. It's a thank that you shows so being a good friend. No way. No, no, no. no, no. I'm not even going to let him play me let like me, that. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you like this. Yeah. It, they're different. There are different worlds. Right, they're different worlds. They're different. They're different. Like you know, not only demographics. I'm not talking about in terms of race or religion, that kind of stuff. I'm talking about just what people are interested in. I bet you, amongst young folks, people maybe under eighteen, you're more recognizable oh, yeah, to I them. See that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. is a different. Like you know, when we had Gerard on the show, he had a great point about how there's more famous people now. Like yeah. back in the day, there was three famous people. Yeah. Right. It was Johnny Carson, whoever the president was, and then whoever the Russian prime minister was. Like that's yeah. the only people people knew. Yeah. You know, Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. There was no famous people. Yeah. And now there are more famous. There's like thousands of famous people. People famous YouTube, that kind of stuff. But I remember sitting there going like, like, holy shit, this guy's on fucking. This guy's on the, the the Letterman slot. This is fucking late night. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is fucking happening right now. Yeah. And then also going, does Colbert know who he's interviewing? Like I literally had this moment where like I don't know if Col does Colbert know your influence. Well, well he came in. The, remember he came in the green room and he was like Monk's Corner. Yeah, he shouted your so shit. I don't out. know if that was prep or what. I feel like any good host knows about who the guest is. I mean, he had talked about his pride. I mean, he did a whole uh, skit based on the Hillary and the hot sauce thing. Right, right, that, right, Like right. last week or a week before. Yeah, so. so he's familiar. Listen, God is good, man. I'm sure you know. All I'm saying is you, he's referencing shit that's happening to you. Yeah. You're not referencing shit that's happened to Colbert on Breakfast I, Club. Yeah. You no, know, no, no, I do, I do, I do. You I have. Do. Yeah, yeah, I, I show Colbert love on Breakfast Club. No, I'm not saying you don't show him love. I'm saying you're not making skits on Breakfast Club about nah, things nah, that have happened to him. Nah. I'm, I'm just saying in terms of, listen, we understand what late night is and that kind of stuff, but that's because I think we grew up idolizing it, right? If we really just kind of look at your impacts. Let's put this in perspective, Dave. Do you understand what I'm I trying to say? But this is, the, this is the reality of it. Colbert's got like 14 million Twitter followers. I got a million. Is he a 14 1. million? 4. Yeah, though? let's stop it. Okay, Colbert is out of here. <laughs> All right? Uh, now you got to rethink everything uh, you just uh, said. All right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Colbert's got like 14 million. Really? Yes, I was looking at it last night. Like, Colbert is out here, bro. How many people, how many people, um, how many people, how many listeners does uh, Breakfast Club have? We in, the, we in the millions. We in the multi-millions. We're in 52 markets now. I mean, we're in the, we're in the millions. You have to be. Yeah, we're in the millions. Like, it's like, 
Eight, seven, eight million, something like that. That's probably yeah. a bigger number than he gets on his ni- uh, weekly show or nightly show. I don't know, man. I promise you it is. He's on every night. CBS, at the least, he's getting two million people to watch that show. I think night. that would be a high estimate. Maybe. I think. Maybe. Be, I'm just saying it's a different world we live in right now. Media is, media you is said different. You did, you did Guy Code this week, right? Yeah, last week. I don't even know if we're supposed to say that. Yeah, whatever. Shit. We said it don't okay, matter. Fuck everybody. But we're knows. discussing, we, we, uh, one topic is fame. Yep. Right, and I was telling them yesterday that fame is definitely not the same as it was oh. in the '90s. Remember, we was having this conversation about Kevin Hart and Martin, mm-hmm. and I feel like Kev is doing way more than Martin was in the '90s. Martin, Martin did a lot, but Martin was more famous. But Martin was more famous yeah. because it was harder to be famous. Bro, back there was then. ten famous people. <laughs> There's no, there's no, dude, when you think about fame back yeah. in the day, yeah. like even with bands, like there was five bands. Like, yeah. think about, like, we only knew a handful. Of, now yeah. there's a million musicians. There's designers getting pussy, futures. We, these groupies yeah. are tired. These yeah. groupies got to fuck all of SoundCloud. Listen, people were so famous back in the day. Think about this. People were so famous back in the day. That all they had to do was sign something. That's and it. that meant something. This, look, look, look. Hey, just, Angie Martinez just, signed my book. Look, like Angie, I had Angie autograph her book for me today. But look, 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 that's her autograph. I like, was in yo, her presence. Yo, some shit you can't even read on a napkin. It meant something. That's how famous people were. Now, now you got to do a video now with somebody. Now you got to do a whole Snapchat. Few of them. Yo, I'm out here with designer. You know the guy that sound like future. Hey, say panda, 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 panda. So people know who you are like it's bad yo like fame is not even it's what, different it, bro. listen Gerard Carmichael who I love mm-hmm. his TV show is one of the funniest TV shows on television I love the Carmichael show yep. he's got a sitcom on NBC that comes on every week yep. he had an HBO special mm-hmm. he got like 40,000 followers on Twitter <laughs> Cardi B got like 2 million yeah. right? like let's put that in perspective there's more people out here that probably know who Cardi B is yeah, and Cardi the, B is a B story on Love and Hip Hop Yes. She's not even the main. Yes, <laughs> she's, not even the she's main famous draw. on Instagram. I love Cardi too. Mm-hmm. I love Cardi. I'm, that's, that's kind of a toss-up. Who I'd rather probably listen to more, Cardi or Gerard? Oh, Cardi. You probably Gerard. Yeah, Cardi. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look. If I need advice on like life or those kind of things, probably. Go- Actually, I don't know. Cardi don't, got good life advice too. If Gerard was to ask me right now, who'd be a good person to put on my show? I'd be like, yo, you really need to look into Cardi B. She'd be a good friend to <laughs> Tiffany's character on the show. <laughs> Tiffany had this. True. She'd be a good friend on the show. But it's just like fame just. Isn't the same no more. I, but I don't, I don't, I don't do it for fame. I don't think you do. No, greatness. Do it for greatness, man. Greatness is the same. Greatness will never not be the same. Greatness will never not be the same. Because greatness is greatness. greatness you can't greatness. measure it in another way. Now, if you appreciate someone's greatness, that's on. That's fame. Fame is the appreciation of greatness. You, I might not think someone's great, but you yeah. might think they're great. Yeah. So, fame is appreciation plus greatness. Greatness is just greatness, dude. You know why that is a fact? It's a fact because you can be around a famous person, mm-hmm. and I'm not excited because they're famous. I'm excited because of they're the great. Yeah. They produce. Yep. I remember being around Taylor Swift early on. This is a true story. I uh-huh. might have told you this before. Me and Duval is up at MTV. Everybody going crazy for Taylor Swift. It was like her first album. What was it called? I don't fucking know. 18 or some 16, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Some, some number. So they're going crazy, right? Me and Duvall like, yo, who is that? And the white, woman, the white girl's like, you don't know who that is? That's Taylor Swift. And we like, all right. I said, you know who fucking Waka Flock is? What about Gucci Man? She's like, no. I said, okay then. I didn't give a fuck about Taylor Swift because... It wasn't your world. She, 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 she don't do nothing I give a fuck about. Not to say, not, not saying she's not great. I just didn't care. Yeah. So it wasn't her fame. I don't care that everybody's going crazy over her. It's like, sure. all right. So that's the truth. It's the greatness. Like Angie Martinez, is, I'd much rather kick it with Angie Martinez than Taylor yeah. Swift. Because she means more to me in, in my world. Yeah, I don't get nervous around people that I don't find, like around celebs that I'm not, you know, uh, bewildered by their greatness. Like if I'm hanging out with someone I really admire, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. fuck, if Allen Iverson was in the room or something like that, I'd probably be nervous. You know, I, this is somebody that I've idolized and, you know, I've probably thought about having conversations with my whole life. But if I'm in a room with Dr. Oz or some shit like that, like, I'm just I like not going to... I like him, but yeah. I'm not blown away. It's like, all right, bro, yeah. you know, you know how to eat vegetables and do push-ups and shit. I, it's not going to, it's not going to, like, blow me away by yeah. your talent, you know? I don't get nervous over that kind of shit because whenever I'm in those situations, I just feel like I belong. Really? Yeah, I feel like I belong. 
Like yeah. when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm uh, when I end up around certain people, it's just like I feel like I belong. And you know what I do in those situations? I speak less, listen more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I have no need to try to prove myself because I can't prove myself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If I'm in a room with somebody like Jay Z, the fuck? What the fuck can I say? Yeah. All I'm thinking in my mind is when Jay Z says, "Motherfucker, you're broke." What the fuck you gonna tell me? Yeah, yeah. So there's no no need to volunteer information. Yeah, yeah. Now if he asks me something, yeah, that's different. But 95 percent of the time when I'm in when I find myself in those situations, I'm listening more. And yeah. all I'm thinking in my mind is I'm here for a reason. I'm here because you know, God wants me to get some information from this individual yeah. that benefit me in the future and to help me grow. Yeah. So that's, that's just the way I look at it. Period. So I don't ever get nervous. Like, it's do you like, ever, do you ever feel, do you ever feel like, um, people could, could think that you want something from them? Absolutely. And then how do you deal with that? Don't that's, ask that's, for nothing. But I, I don't ask for anything, but yeah. like I almost find that I'm a little bit more like standoffish and, and not not rude, but definitely standoffish and less interested around celebs just because I don't want them to think that I, I want something from them because so many people are probably asking them for shit. That's number one. So so what do you how do you deal with balancing who you really are as a person and also You kick it with them. Like this is the thing that we don't we forget about celebrities. They're just human beings. I don't care who they are. Yeah. They're human beings at the end of the day. They shit like you, they breathe yeah. like you, they got the same eyes as you, same hands, all of that shit. Yeah. So it's just like when you're in their presence, just shut the fuck up. Yeah. Listen more than you talk. Yeah. And Get information from them. And when yeah. they ask you questions, tell them and be honest with them. Yeah. Like, don't look at them as, oh, this super celebrity. I got to say the right thing. Yeah. Motherfucker, just be yourself. Yeah. Just be you. And all that other shit, it'll just fall into place. Yeah. I, I pray. That's what I think. Yeah. No, I think it's a good way of looking. I just, I, I've noticed that there is that kind of, I don't want to call it anxiety, but there is that thing like, you know, if I'm around this person and I might really want to compliment them, I might really want to say like That's I'm a cool. big fan. That's fine. And and I and I probably might do that, but at the same time, I don't want to feel like there is this thing in the back of my head, like yo, don't make them feel like you're asking for anything. Don't ask them for anything because I never do. I don't want nothing. Like, you know? I don't even ask for pictures. Yeah, that's, that's true. the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be in some. God bless me. Thank God, I be in some great rooms yeah. around some great people, and I really feel like the reason I continue to be in those situations is because I don't do things like that. I don't feel the need to document it. You yeah. know what I'm saying either you believe me or you don't. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, I don't remember. And I, I don't even be sharing the stories half the time. Yeah. Like sometimes, like literally, sometimes I'll be laying in bed with my wife and be like, "This is fucking surreal, bro." Yeah, like. Yeah. like yeah, uh, some like uh, phone calls is what trips me out the most. What do you mean? I mean, like when you get these crazy phone calls, it's like, yo, this is such and such. Yo, this is such and such. I be getting some great like who phone calls. I don't want to say, but I be getting some great. Don't do that. I don't. I don't. I don't want to just say something. I will tell you one. I give you Go. one. This is an yeah. ill phone call, but this is my this is my OG. I've been knowing him for a long time. Yeah, but he's only really called my phone like once. Okay, ever. And I've talked to him. You've seen him around, but he's only called my phone like once. Yeah. So it starts off with, uh, "Assalamu alaikum, brother." I'm like, oh, it was, it was, it was good. Uh, alaikum assalam, brother Don. Uh, the, the minister would like to talk to you. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> brother Charlemagne. <laughs> and it's Minister Farrakhan. Yeah. That's cool to me. Yeah. That's like, yo, this, this is because that's somebody that benefits my life in a different way, yeah, not yeah, just yeah. from an entertainment standpoint, an enlightening way, yeah, an yeah. empowering way, an educational way. But just for him to call me and you know say what he said to me, it's just like, what he say? I'm not saying. I'm definitely not giving all that out. But he'll be back on the Breakfast Club soon. We've had him on the Breakfast Club once. He'll be back. He'll be back real soon. Matter of fact, what is, what hair product does he use? Hair pro, what moisturizer? You know, Mr. Fat Con's, we're recording this on May 11th. Mr. Fat Con's 83 years old today. Wow. Today is his born day. Happy born day to the triple OG, the Honorable Minister Louis Fat Con. 83 years old today. That's all, that's all I want, bro. Let me live, let me live, man. So even 83? somebody like Stephen Colbert, Stephen Colbert's like 50, let me get his age right. He's like 54. Chris, can you Google this for me? How old is Stephen Colbert? Stephen Colbert's like 54. And he's just getting, his life is still growing. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, sure. He had the Daily Show thing going. Now he's got the Late Show. Yeah, the Colbert no, Report. No, and the then Colbert had, yeah. No telling how long that's go, this going to go. Yeah, then you look yeah. at somebody like Steve Harvey, who's almost 60. Like, like, like you got all the, you got all of these freaking, you got all of these. Hold on. It's my sneaker plug. It's like uh -huh. an important person in my life. <laughs> Listen, Angel, 
Charlie Salute Bay. to my guy, Andrew. Good, yeah. Andrew. How are you, brother? Right, but you got all of these guys that are still growing, mm-hmm. still evolving in their respective careers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So guys like that, it's like, yo, just let me live. As long as I stay alive, everything else will figure itself out. Next time he comes on the show, ask him what he puts in his hair. He's got a great, I'm not being serious. He's got a great, there's like a nice shine to it. You know, yeah. I'm a hair guy. He's got a nice shine and it's like, it's, it's laid very well. Like yeah. it's, uh, I'm interested. I'm interested to know the product. 83 years old. You know what the product is? What uh, is that? Allah. Allah. Okay. He got God? He got God laying that shit down perfectly? Man, listen, I'm going to tell you how piece, much of a piece of shit show is, right? What happened? So a Midcon Canelo fighting. Saturday. <laughs> we all knew Canelo was going to knock him here the fuck out. Predicted that. You know Adrian Bona tried to bet me $10,000 that Khan was going to beat Canelo Stop on it. the Breakfast Club. Stop and I told Adrian Bona, I said, Canelo's going to knock Amir Khan the fuck out. Hey, I wouldn't bet ten grand, but I, I mean, that's a... That's I don't a, gamble. But... I'm just not a gambling person. Right, so right. I don't gamble. Even if I'm sure. When I'm right, mm-hmm. I don't gamble. I, yeah, just, yeah. I just don't gamble. That's just something I don't do. Yeah. I said, Brona, Canelo's going to knock Amir Khan out. <laughs> I don't know if you, I know you don't like Mexicans, <laughs> all right? But don't let that 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 prejudice yeah. misjudge your 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 opinion of this fight. <laughs> yeah. Amir's chin is weak as fuck. Yeah. Canelo is a beast. He's yeah. going to knock Amir Khan the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Guaranteed. Yep. He bet me ten thousand. I said no, no, I don't gamble. You know, whatever. But so Schultz, we're texting. Let me see if I still got the exact. I remember by heart, but I just wanted to. Schultz said to me, "This fight." To determine who Donald Trump deports from America. <laughs> <laughs> I said the winner gets to stay. The winner gets to stay. <laughs> Canelo's a Mexican, Amir Khan is a Muslim. But this is the convo that we have because it started by you texting me. <laughs> oh, you forgot yeah, that? No, no, I remember. You I remember, forgot I remember. That. So out of nowhere, Charlamagne, Charlamagne just texts me, yo. He goes, yo, you think that um, Canelo's 27 nieces and nephews all came in the same car? <laughs> Yo, this, bro, this is why <laughs> this is why you need different nations oh, fighting oh, and different religions fighting, right? Because yes. it makes the convo interesting. When it's just American versus American, black dude versus black dude, Man, Mexican versus Mexican, it's boring. We've exactly. We need conflicts. We got enough black white jokes. We we love a good race joke. We a. Hey, right. I'm not above a good race okay. joke. Come on, now. and I'm not gonna front. I, listen, I hit, I hit, I. You know, but you gotta know who to talk to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Don't don't talk to Van. Van from TMZ was watching that show. He was watching that rooting for Khan. Yeah, he loves Khan. Van really don't like Mexican. Oh, man. hates Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> and he's doing his podcast with a Mexican. Well, he got a podcast. He's he, he's about to have a podcast on loudspeaker. Frenemies of the state. Really? With, with Who's Van the Mexican? Lathan and Letty Martinez. Oh, Letty's doing it with them. Yes. Wow. He's trying. He's trying. He's, he's trying to. This is. Remember when Donald Trump had the two black girls? Um, oh, yeah. What was the two black girls? Sugar and Spice. Yeah, what was those yeah, girls' names? Yeah, I know. It was what you're some shit. About. Some seasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starbucks. Like Diamond and Princess. Yeah, 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 some, some shit, shit. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. When he had those two black girls trumping for him and yeah. stumping for him. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's trying to do with Letty. So he's taking Letty, the Mexican, yep. and he's going to try to get Mexicans on his side. Absolutely. Not going to work, Van. We see right through. We see right through that right shit. Right through that shit. Right fucking through But good choice it. with Letty. God bless her. That's going to be a great podcast. How are you going to want to deport those things? <laughs> like, that's... A, I really think that Letty needs to show her titties to Trump. And Trump might be like, all right, man, let's just keep out the Muslims. So let's not... Let's not keep out the Mexicans. No reason to go full Mexican on this shit. Let's keep them. Hey, man. There's something to that. Bro, beautiful... Because that's what I'm saying. God bless all the Mexican women out there. Mm-hmm. All the housekeepers, we love y'all. <laughs> a lot of y'all shit. got a SpongeBob Square ass. So, it's like, <laughs> so, so it's, I can understand why you may not appreciate it. But then there's some real beautiful ones like Letty, beautiful. like Selma Hayek. Selma. Is she Mexican? Yep. Sure. Eva Mendez? Eva's not. What is she? Puerto Rican? That's not the Chilean or some shit? Latin? Yeah, she's Isn't something. Mexican's Latin? Men's are part of it, but it's not the whole thing. But yeah, there's a lot of very beautiful Mexican with all the soap opera shit. Watch Telemundo. Watch, watch those, right. those what's it called, channels. Watch the red carpet from that shit. They're all beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Guys, don't forget this episode of Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by Bevel, the first and only shaving system designed specifically for coarse, curly hair and sensitive skin. We can say it a million different ways, but the fact of the matter is Bevel was made with us in mind. 
us? Maybe this is your part to raise Charlemagne. Yeah, us as in <laughs> black people. 80% of black men and women struggle with razor bumps, but up to 30% of all men and women encounter razor bumps as well. It's for everybody, okay? Mm-hmm. Designed from the ground up to give a smooth bump-free shave. Bevel's in-to-end shaving system includes a pre-shave oil, badger brush, safety razor, blade, shaving cream, and a cooling restoring balm. All the tools you need to get that skin right for the summertime. It's not too late. I don't want to hear any excuses, okay? Bevel is the creation of Tristan Walker who saw a void in the health and beauty market, and his goal has been to make that market more accessible and simple for people of color. Tristan is using his power for good by looking out for you. Uh, Word is, he's coming to the Breakfast Club next week. Really? Yeah, he's going to be with Swiss Beats' his barber. Um, Imo? Jomo? I don't know Swiss's Barber, so if your name's not Jomo, don't get mad at me. Okay, but he'll be with Swiss's Barber to show us that new bevel clipper. Salute to uh, Cedric. The car guy showing off his new bevel razor along with a few other brilliant idiot sponsored items. Points for president presentation and dedication. Tristan would be proud. Salute to like good knee beer on Twitter. Told us I just ordered a bevel kit today because of brilliant idiots and see the goblin yapping about it. So I'm going to see if it's legit. Well, neighbor, you probably already know by now it is indeed legit. Get the first month for your bevel subscription for free by going to getbevel.com and entering promo code free idiots at checkout. Join the ranks of the many men and women too. All right, who are shaving smarter? Getbevel.com. That's G E T B E V E L dot com. Enter that promo code Free Idiots and be blessed. Yes. Now, can we talk about what's going on in North Carolina? Because all week long, my timeline has been filled with transgenders and transsexuals yeah. who are upset at my stance on this because on the Breakfast Club, we talked about. Well, explain what the situation is so anybody doesn't know. I don't know exactly what the situation is. All I know is that there's some discrimination laws going on in North Carolina. Yep. And transgenders and transsexuals want to use the bathroom mm-hmm. of the gender they identify with. But I okay. think it's some other, you know, discrimination type laws going on in there. I'm not sure. Yep. All I know is simple and plain if you got a dick, Go in the men's bathroom. Yeah. If you got a vagina, go in the woman's bathroom. Now, okay. if you are a transsexual or transgender who has cut their penis off and you now have a vagina, go in the woman's bathroom. If you are a woman who identifies as a man and yeah. you've done whatever you got to do to become a man, yeah. you can go in the men's bathroom. Okay. Let's break this down. Uh, you, why, is, why do you not want a trans person in the women's bathroom? A few reasons. I don't even think it's because of the transgender or the transsexual. Matter of fact, I know it's not. Uh, And I hate to be the bearer of bad news or be the pessimistic person in this situation. But I think about I think about the sexual predators who will take advantage of this law. The young man who will say, I identify as a woman so I can just sneak into the woman's bathroom. Not even sneaking anymore. I can just right. be in the woman's bathroom, jacking off at the stall, yeah. or just going in there to smell vagina, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever was going on before this, yeah. let's just keep it that way. Because never in my life did I think, where do transgenders go to piss? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It, was, it never crossed my mind okay. until now. So here's my question. Mm-hmm. Um, should we stop all people from being custodians? Should we stop all trans people from being teachers? Should we stop? I mean, there's many ways to be around kids outside of just going into the bathroom yeah, the where bathroom a kid is potentially a could be. The bathroom is supposed to be a private, safe place, a sanctuary. Like, I can't just go stand in the woman's bathroom because mm-hmm. women are in there doing women's shit. Yeah. Guys are in there with our dicks out peeing. If a girl walks in, you're like, oh, yeah. we probably won't care so much because we're men. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you want to see my dick? Fine. Yeah, yeah. But I can understand a woman's privacy. If I'm standing outside of a woman's bathroom yeah. and I see a man walking, yeah. I don't give a fuck if they got on dresses or wigs or they just walk in looking like one of us. Yeah, yeah. My, I'm, my, my antennas are up. I'm like, what the fuck you going in the bathroom for, bro? Yeah. My daughter's in there. What the fuck you going in the bathroom for, bro? My wife's in there. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to have to sit around and be worried about well, does he identify as a woman or is this just the perv? Like, it yeah. just opens up too much room for error. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's the point? Yeah. No, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to think, is it like... And what's next? What's next? Because I'm going to tell you one thing right now. Yeah. Oh, so we can go in whatever bathroom we want? Okay, yeah. if I'm a man and I commit a crime yeah. and I got to do some prison time, you got to send me to the woman's ba- the woman's well, jail because I identify as a woman. Bro, that's what I said about, you know? that, about Caitlin. I thought that was her whole plan this whole time. She you know, she got the murder she got the murder charge and not she didn't get the murder charge. She got the manslaughter charge and I thought she was trying to avoid, you know, man's jail by, by becoming a woman. What if I'm some pussy-ass basketball player who ain't good enough to be in the pros but I can bust these girls in the WNBA ass. Absolutely. I identify as a woman. Yep. Let me play in the WNBA. Shout out to like, Ju- where do we stop? And, and, and you can't say, Charlemagne, you're being ridiculous right yeah, now yeah. because 
if, if, if we're acting like this is just some game of make believe, mm -hmm. and we believe as much as we want to believe. Yeah. But if you're gonna go there with the bathrooms, you yeah. gotta go there with everything. Yeah. If you want to be fair about every, the situation. Yeah. My feeling is the vast minority of people are pedophiles, right? Mm -hmm. So do we disenfranchise a group of people in, in this, uh, in this uh, conversation as trans people because of the vast minority, like the vast minority of, you know, white kids shoot up schools. Yeah. Does that mean we, we just stop all white kids from going to school? Because the vast minority shoot them up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just feel like, I feel like we're punishing trans people for something that probably isn't going to happen. But we're not punishing them. And also, furthermore, like, if you're a pedophile, I would assume you're a little bit more, um, not creative in your pedophilia, but a little bit more safe in your pedophilia. Like, you, if you're a pedophile, you're just going to literally walk into a girl's bathroom and start diddling a little girl in the middle of a public girl's Jerry bathroom. Jerry Sandusky was fucking little boys in Penn State shower after in having his a shower. football camp. But it was his shower. Yeah, that's what, he that's was true. grooming yeah. these kids. He was bringing them in since they're young, finding the ones with Listen, no fucking you, parents you really and shit. really want to empower trannies? Just build them their own bathroom. Build their own bathroom. Have the, the the men with the guy on it, the women with the woman on it. Yeah. The, the transgender have a print symbol on it. So and now, just let people go. Let them use the restroom. Yeah, let but, them use the restroom. Bro. Yeah, but then then now you got separate but equal, right? Now you so got. So what? Let's, I'm be honest with you, right? You were okay with sep you okay with different water fountains? No. Listen to me. Uh, yeah. Let's be clear about this. Yeah. If I'm, I'm black, right? Yeah. So let's because everybody like to always say, well, imagine if you're black. If they would have gave us the choice yeah. back in the day, if I'm Martin Luther King and they were like, all right, look. You can either do this whole integration thing, yeah. or we can just give y'all your own land and let y'all go start your own shit. Yeah. I'm going to go start my own shit. So if I'm a transgender, they want to get my own bathroom? That's what's up. You going to tell me that when you go somewhere and yeah. they give, got you your own little private bathroom, that don't make you feel good? Um, I, I prefer my own little private bathroom. That's what I'm saying. But you have to realize this got nothing to do with the private bathroom. This has to do with them being accepted as female. Now, here's the reality. You can't force anybody to accept you. Like, I think no, forcing someone to accept you is like forcing someone to find you beautiful. I agree. You know how we like try to make people find people beautiful all the time? Like, there'll be this person, she's like a burn victim, and then she's recovered, and people are like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful and brave. Yeah. No, she's brave. She's not beautiful. You know what I mean? It, it, that's okay. So, people... People don't have to accept you if you're trans and that kind of stuff. You can't force exception, you know, uh, or accepting rather on, on to people. That's just impossible. I accept trans. You know what I'm saying? If you want to identify with whatever you want to identify with, cool uh -huh. with me. But I look at it. I look at it as when you got a child, right? Yeah. And you know your child runs around, and your child's like playing make believe, and he's like, "Oh, I can fly, daddy." You got the bed sheet tied around yeah. her neck. Oh, I can fly. Look at me. Look yeah, at me. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, baby. Yeah. When you see her at the top of the steps about to jump, yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like you chill out. Fly. Yeah. You really can't fly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You really can't fly. Yeah. Enough's enough before you hurt yourself. Yeah. I think this right here is we're at the point where we're like, everybody relax. Yeah. Before we hurt ourselves. Because yeah. all of this shit is going to do is lead to problems. I don't know what we were doing before. Yeah. But let's just go back to that. I think we 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 I think telling people that it's okay. This is a law now Yeah. that, you know, if you say you identify as one, you can go in this bathroom. I think that's like leaving your house, yeah. announcing it on social media and telling people, hey, this is my address. The alarm system isn't on. I'll be gone for two weeks. Like you really think it's that dangerous? You really think yes, that many man. people are going to be hurt by it? Yes. I really don't think so. Yes, I think you're opening the door to, to, for perverts, bro. For what? Okay, so perverts try to take advantage. Perverts are going to be perverts. Yes, they are, but d you're giving them a, a reason. You're telling them it's okay. I really don't think perverts are going to walk into a bathroom and try to do it. I just don't I think. I definitely think they will. You really think so? Absolutely. Why? Just because that's the way or are we living. There was a video online. This dude who kept asking the guy, so I can go in that bathroom. I can go pee in the woman's bathroom yeah. right now. I can go in there right now. The guy's like, yeah. Like, that's just the mentality. People do things just yeah. to do it. I mean, look, I think I think it's stupid just because if I was if I was a man that wants to identify as female, I would never... I think the bathroom thing is stupid. We were talking about this other day. Like, the, the, the line at the woman's bathroom is way too long for me to, like, hold onto that ideal. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. if I'm a trans woman, I'd be trans woman all the time until the bathroom and yeah. I'd fucking hike up my skirt and pee in the fucking urinal yeah. with Ted, Bob, and John. Yeah, There's yeah. no fucking way I'm gonna wait online in the woman's bathroom to use it. Without well, listen, a doubt. I cannot wait until yeah. I go to, like... Just leave it, leave it. The whole video we've had it anyway. 
Listen, yeah. I can't wait until I go to my next major sporting event. Yeah, yeah. Or my next major concert. Yeah, yeah. And I'm in this long ass yeah, line yeah. in the men's bathroom. I'm yeah. like, yo, ain't none of y'all trans, bro? <laughs> Don't none of y'all identify as women? Yeah. Can't y'all can none of y'all go to you know you can go to the women's bathroom, yeah. right? You know what it is? And then we were talking about this yesterday, but I think I think what happened is this is all about the formation tour. It's like w- <laughs> women knew how long the bathroom line was going to yeah, be yeah, at the yeah, Beyonce yeah. concert yeah. and all these stadiums. So they fucking, I'm trans when Beyonce comes into town. Yeah, exactly. I'm going right into that men's room yeah, and I'm, I'm peeing in that urinal. You know, a bunch of girls in the line, like, allow yeah. me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ho. <laughs> My name is Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be Jackie. I am Jonathan. <laughs> listen, and, yeah, listen, man. God bless all the transgenders, all the trans. This is the other thing that we have to do as, mm-hmm. as people. Yep. Just because I tell you mm-hmm. I don't agree with this law does not mean I hate you. Yeah, yeah. Does not mean I'm prejudiced yeah, against you. Like, yeah. we gotta stop that. Like, yeah. that's, they're so quick to dismiss us. Like, oh, you've lost a listener this morning, Charlemagne. Why? Because yeah, yeah. I, I got a difference of opinion. Yeah. Grow up. Yeah. What kind of human being are you yeah. that you think that everybody in the world is gonna agree with you for the rest yeah. of your life? Yeah. I'm not transphobic. I'm not shaming you. Yeah. I just don't agree. You got two daughters. Just, just say what it is. You got two daughters, That's and it. you're listen. Here's the thing: if if somebody set made a rule, right? If they basically, if the trans community came out and everybody came out and pedophiles came out and everybody said, "Listen, yeah, we promise we're not going to diddle a single person, a diddle a single kid in the bathrooms." I'm sure you'd be fine if trans people no, would use the bathroom. I just don't like. I don't even like unisex bathrooms. But hold on, hold on. But your argument is only the safety of kids. No, the safety of everybody. Per, I don't, my wife. Everybody included. Everybody, women, period. It's going to be a okay. lot of perverts who go in these fair, bathrooms fair, 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 just fair. to be creeps. Okay, so your thing is, okay, so what, what I'm basically trying to do is... And I'm is, not saying nobody's going to get raped. I'm trying I'm, to create a vacuum here. Yeah. I'm trying to basically say that your thing is not anti-trans, it's more anti-rape, sexual assault, pedophilia. Just any of that creep shit. Like, I don't have no problem with transgenders, trans. But do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So right now, this argument has become... I think the way you need to frame it so it doesn't seem anti-trans is, look... People are going to take advantage of this trans, uh, of your lifestyle as yeah. a trans person. Yeah. Creeps and, and perverts are going to take advantage of your lifestyle to be a creep and a pervert and make it shittier for you. Yeah. I think that's the way you got to frame it because right now, I know how you feel, but I think people listen, Michael. I think he's anti trans. I think he doesn't believe that we're actually women. It has that, nothing the other. to do with you. It has to do with you think that a man could walk into a woman's bathroom and, under and, the guise and of being a transsexual as a woman and then start jerking off in front of Absolutely. your wife. And and, yeah. and and furthermore, where does it go from here? What do you mean? Because if I'm a man, like I said earlier, if I'm yeah. a man and I commit a crime, yeah, yeah. Nope, send me to a woman's prison. I identify as a woman. Okay, what about if I'm at SeaWorld, can I just jump in with the penguins and be like, I'm trans penguin? No, they're gonna arrest you. But not if I'm trans penguin. I'm they're waddling around. You. But but seriously, but honestly, tell me, yeah. tell, you cannot see that happening what because if you're opening the door to say you can go into whatever bathroom you want based mm-hmm. on what you identify as, yeah. why I can't go to whatever jail I want based on what I identify identity? Why I can't play in whatever sports league I want based on what I identify sure. as? Sure. Like, where do we stop? There's a female MMA fighter that apparently beat the fucking shit right. out of a... But she's All a trans right. MMA fighter, so yeah. she's a man that changes... Beat the shit out of a girl. And, and, how can you, <laughs> and how can you tell us, oh, that's ridiculous about the sports leagues. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous about the prisons. Mm-hmm. So it's not ridiculous about the bathrooms? Think about that. If yeah. you can say it's ridiculous about all this other stuff... Yeah. Why is it not ridiculous about the bathroom? Because I don't think that they have an advantage in terms of peeing, and the peeing is in a competition. Shit, me. You, if, if, you, if you're a woman in line yeah. and Caitlyn Jenner's behind you and you're like, yeah. I really need to go. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be terrified. Yeah. Like, Keep you know it real. What? Go ahead. As a go woman, ahead. how pissed off are you going to be to walk into that bathroom and there's pee all over the seat? <laughs> right? Like, like you up. never got to do a pee seat. Word you up. got nice warm seats because girls' butt cheeks have been Word on up. them. And all of a sudden you walk out and there's a trans woman who's peed all over the As fucking seat. As a man, seat. why sit when you don't have to? I only sit on toilets in public when I absolutely have to. I got to shit real bad. Yeah. I got to go. I'm lying in the seats. Yeah. I'm sitting down. I'm taking a shit. I'm wiping my ass. I really don't like doing that. The beauty of having a dick is being that you can just piss anywhere you want. Yeah. You don't got to wash your hands if you don't want to. Yeah. Why sit? So Why choose to sit when you don't have to in a public place, guys? I'm not going to lie to you, Charlamagne. Sometimes I sit. I'm, you Oh, no. Andrew will, I sit. Andrew will shit 
anywhere. anywhere. If I Andrew should... was a rapper, that should be his tagline. Show, show. Mr. Shit Anywhere. Anywhere, that's you know right. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Pull up and shit anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your mama's crib. <laughs> taking a dump. <laughs> You know what I mean? What was your mom doing? I don't know. Andrew don't give a fuck. I took a nice dump at Colbert. And Andrew, not only does Andrew not give a fuck, I think Andrew be marking his territory, bro. Oh, yeah. I'll be honest with you, this shit is Absolutely. weird. Like, Andrew will pull up and Andrew, he'll announce it. Like, yo, where, where can I go? I got to take me a shit. Like, he'll say it <laughs> proudly to whoever. Son, how am I going to eat a quarter block of cheese at Colbert and not take a shit? I don't like nobody. Listen, I don't even like nobody to know I'm shitting. I'm like a cat with mine. I'm going to sneak off. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm gonna sneak off. I'm gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna. Yo, where's Charlemagne at? Yeah, come nobody back. knows. I come back, come back on my phone, acting all distinguished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Acting like I'm on a major car. I, I sometimes I leave my room like, hello? hello? I'm going to the bathroom to take a shit. If I got a shit in public, I do it real discreet, real cat like. So I don't understand why any man would want to go in the bathroom uh, and sit when you don't have to. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Know. Well, yo, you know what pisses me off the most about this North Carolina shit is the, uh, the artists boycotting North Carolina because I find this shit so fucking hypocritical yeah. the, NBA, well, the NBA I don't think is going to boycott it I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with the all-star game but like Bruce Springsteen all these artists are boycotting it right because they don't think it's fair to trans people or uh, people from the LGBT community right gotcha here's my issue with it you perform in countries where it's not even legal to be gay Dang. there's no gay man go to if you perform in Italy you perform in North Carolina. Don't get on your fucking high horse. Trendy ass activist. Exactly. That's my yeah. point. And this is what I hate is it, it, it here's my thing. If you are consistent, I just want consistency. I hate the hypocrisy unless you admit you're a fucking hypocrite. Yeah. Just if, if you pro gay rights and you're doing this for gay rights, don't perform in fucking Abu Dhabi. Yeah, don't yeah, perform yeah, yeah. in parts of South America where yeah, it's illegal to be right. gay. Don't you're perform right. in, in Italy where you're it's right. illegal to be fucking gay, where they don't you're have right. gay marriages like that. So that's my issue about it. Be be about your cause. Don't take advantage of a cause. Make it look like you're a really good person by saying, oh, I'm going to cancel my show in North Carolina. Fuck you. There are people in North Carolina that supported you your whole life. They're, they're against this, this ruling. That's Me it. personally, I'm against this ruling. So That's now you're going to shit on your own fans and the people against this ruling? You know Stop why? judging the whole state. You know why? Because we talk about equality. Yeah. But equality is not, I'm comfortable and you're not comfortable. Equality is not... You're comfortable and I'm not comfortable. Equality is when either everybody's comfortable or everybody's uncomfortable. Yes. Right now, y'all don't give a fuck what heterosexuals is talking about. Yeah. Y'all don't give a fuck what non transgender people are talking about. Y'all just so quick to call us homophobic because we don't agree with this law. Why can't we all just be human beings? Me and Schultz are friends. We disagree on a lot of shit, yeah. but we're still friends. Yeah, yeah. We're black, we're white, we still we disagree on race shit, everything, but we're still friends. Yeah. Why can't I disagree with the trans community on this one and not be considered transphobic. That yeah. shit is a weak argument, transphobic pe trans people. That shit is lazy for you just to say you're transphobic because I don't agree with you? Because I don't agree with this law? You're describing being white. Really? That's what it's like to be white. I disagree with you. Oh, you're a racist. Nah, yeah, you know, that's true. That's, that's this true. is nah, what nah, it's right. like yeah, to be, right. is the exact yeah, thing yeah, yeah, is what yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, to be yeah, white. Yeah, the yeah, second, yeah. And, and, and not only that, furthermore, a man. This is what people do nowadays. If you're a man and you disagree with a woman saying something, you're mansplaining. You're a yeah, misogynist. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, a sexist. Yeah, 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 All we yeah. do is silence people. If you're a white dude, you disagree with any kind of uh, race thing. Doesn't mean you're saying yeah. that person is is inherently wrong, but you just have a different opinion. Yeah. You're a racist. You're white splaining. Now, if you disagree with any trans person on anything, you're transphobic. It's dumb as shit. And all it is is silencing people because you don't want to hear what they have to say. This trans person, because uh, T.K. Kirkland was on The Breakfast Club. Yeah. T.K. Kirkland said, you know, you know this, this man, woman, or uh, whatever you call it, he really didn't know the term. Yeah, yeah. So the lady says, I'm not listening to y'all no more. I'm like, okay, why? Because I, like, I I talk to everybody. Sure. I'm like, why? Because he didn't call us transgender. It's a simple term. I'm like, maybe he doesn't know. Yeah. Why don't you just shut the fuck up and educate? Yeah, or maybe he was trying to be funny. Or maybe he wasn't trying to be. Maybe he really, man, he's from, TK, I don't know, what TK is an older G. Yeah. Who, this is all brand new to him. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. He don't know the... Terms, transgender, Bro. transsexual, you know. I don't even know the difference between transgender you, and transsexual. I just know it's two different terms. Will you remind everybody what you said? I think you put it the best way. What? Which was, Kate, it took Caitlyn Jenner, no, it took Caitlyn Jenner 30 years to the realize that she... It took Caitlyn Jenner 30 years to understand herself. 
and realize what she is. So how do you expect me to figure it out in 30 days? In one fucking Katie one day, Couric Just one day you want me to Diane automatically yeah. you want me to automatically know everything that's yeah. going on with the trans and the transsexual culture. Like this shit ain't brand new to us. Y'all got mad at me mm -hmm. because when Caitlyn said yeah. I am a woman. Yeah. So I'm showing her respect, identifying her as a woman. Sure. But she's still attracted to women. Oh, so that means she's a lesbian. Mm -hmm. Right? Y'all got so mad at me when I said that Diane Sawyer asked her the same question. The same question immediately. Sure. Immediately. You know why? Because that's a common sense question. If I'm giving you the respect you yep. deserve to say that you're a woman yeah. and you tell me that you like women, okay, so then you're a lesbian. Yep. And if it is more complicated than that, you know what y'all need to do? Make a nice little transgender yeah. handbook, yeah. transsexual manual, yeah. Yeah. okay? And yeah. we'll make our Black Lives Matter manual, yeah. and white people will make their white book, okay? Yeah. And we'll just all trade books and read yeah. up on each other. Yeah. How about that? You know what? I think I think anybody who criticizes a question is a piece of fucking shit. And they don't have an answer. You fucking piece of shit. And you don't have an answer. And, well, absolutely you don't have an answer, because if you had an answer, you would just do it. But if somebody is asking a question... And I mean a genuine question that they want information to be less ignorant and yeah. you criticize the question. Yeah. You don't deserve the equality that comes from that question because you're not willing to put the work out there to get it. If I a agree. white dude comes up to you and they go, hey, why do black fathers, uh, why are they not in their kids' lives, right? If it's a genuine question and you go, you know what, that's misinformation, they are in their kids' lives. There are yeah. tons of black fathers in their kids' lives. You think that because you've been misguided by media, you've yeah. been misguided by television shows, you've been misguided by a lot of different things, yeah. and that's why you think that. All of a sudden, he goes, whoa, I apologize for that. I, I didn't know, and I was ignorant to that situation, but now I learned. If you go, fuck you, you racist prick, Guess that's, what that's he keeps fault. thinking. Guess what he keeps thinking. The exact bullshit that he kept exactly. thinking. Exactly. And, and, and you know, you got to stop thinking that people are being condescending when they're asking you questions because I keep telling y'all all the time, there was a time when you that know knew not. You can't, believe that everybody has the same information as you. You can't believe that everybody has the same education as you, the same experiences as you. So yeah. if I'm asking you a question, I'm really asking you because I want to know. Yeah. So how about just educate me? Don't think I'm being condescending. Don't think I'm just being a dickhead. I'm being ignorant. Just motherfucking Give them the educate me. Now, if somebody makes a statement, you can shit on them a little bit for yeah. it. But if they're asking you for information, yeah. Fucking give them information. A, a, a young lady told me in Envy this morning that we were misinformed on the, the H2 bill, I think that's called, in North Carolina. Okay. And I said, why are we misinformed? Because we don't agree. But what, how are you misinformed by it? That's, that's what she was trying to say. She was trying to say we're misinformed because yeah. we don't agree. Like, I'm yeah. like, why? Because we don't agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't agree with it. I don't agree with the fact that transgenders, I mean, are, are you should be able to use the bathroom that you identify as because yeah. I don't agree with that. I'm misinformed. No, yeah. I just don't agree. And that's perfectly fine. When yeah. did we ever get to this point in America where people can't disagree? Why, why we can't respectfully disagree with each other anymore? Why can't we just simply have a conversation sometimes? Well, when Stephen Colbert yeah. asked me last night about God, yeah, what is, what is this the God thing and what yeah. are you the God of? How can I get offended when I know he don't know? Yeah, you can't. It's like him. getting upset that somebody doesn't speak Spanish. <laughs> it literally is the Word same up. shit. It's like you speak to someone Spanish, they go, I don't speak Spanish. How Word the up. fuck do you not speak Spanish? Word up. He don't know Spanish. Teach the motherfucker Spanish and, and then he'll basically and then he'll know. It's simple, man. I want to salute um Angie Martinez. Mm -hmm. If you are a hip hop fan, mm -hmm. if you are a radio guy or girl like myself. You will absolutely love her book, My Voice, a memoir by Angie Martinez. This is a this is classic stories mm -hmm. from a classic person. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier when it comes to fame and stuff. And I read that book in a day, mm -hmm. or two days. And I'm gonna tell you what made me so sad about that book. It made me sad because I didn't get to compete in that era. Now don't get me wrong, I'm happy where I'm at. Probably wouldn't be shit in that era. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But the when you can be great. In an era like that? Yep. Wow. Great in an era of greats, man. Wow. You want competition. Yo, Angie's cute. Angie's peers are, this is her peers. I'm talking about people that she literally came up with. People who didn't have singles out. People whose music she played on the radio for the first time. People like Jay-Z, Mary J. Blige. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You don't get that. You'll never see that again, ever in life. You never Diddy. know. You never know. Who knows Kendrick? Who knows Jay Cole? If these guys end up being the hoves of of uh, yesteryear, I think it's kind of impossible, bro. I think, I, I, like, put it like this: Steph Curry is. Oh my god! And I've said this before. 
I've never seen anything like him ever in my life. He's literally did the you third. See the, did you see the overtime? I saw the highlights. He's literally the third greatest player I've ever seen in my life. Magic Johnson redefined the point guard position, 6'9", 231. Nobody was, he was very athletic for his time for that position. I mean, he may not have been as athletic as the Dr. J's, George Gervin's of the world, but he was a different type of athletic. He just wasn't jumping through the air and shit like they was. But then Michael Jordan and Steph Curry. I've never seen anything like Steph Curry. So Steph Curry is his own level of greatness. Dude, I've never seen anything like Steph Curry, and that's including Jordan. I agree. Now, I, I, Jordan is a better player. He's a better all-around player. He's a way better defender. It's not even close when it comes to defense. Um, he's, but what he did in that overtime, this guy went 0 for 10 threes that game. Scored 17 out of 19 points in the overtime. In dominating fashion. I mean, not even, not even close. Like, pulling up yeah. wet. Pulling up wet. Yeah. It was insane. Like, I, I've never seen any player do this. You know why? Why? This is a jewel, kids. He believes. Steph Curry believes the way Michael Jordan believed, mm -hmm. the way Kobe Bryant believed, the way Magic Johnson believed. Yeah. They, they, they all have this one intangible that LeBron James doesn't have. Which is? It's just the will to win. They never feel like they're out of it. LeBron checks the fuck out every time things aren't going his way. Every time. He checks out every time things are not going his way. And guess what? You mm -hmm. either have it or you don't. LeBron James physically dominant. Mm -hmm. That's why he's able to continue to go to the finals every year yeah. coming out of the East. Yeah. But he never, he doesn't win because he doesn't have that I believe mm. factor. When you got that I believe factor, when you feel like you're the best and mm -hmm. nobody can stop you, that shit demoralizes your competition and uplifts your motherfucking teammates. You know what it is? I, I think that when you're so physically gifted as as LeBron is and so highly touted since you're at since a young age as LeBron is, you don't go through the same adversity adversity that is necessary to build that fucking diamond that is Stephen Curry, that diamond that was Michael Jordan. Yeah. Like both of these, like Stephen Curry got one offer for college. One. Completely overlooked. Went to Davidson, was a star Davidson, but was not super highly touted in the draft. Came into the league. Monte Ellis openly did not want him on the team. Steve Kerr said, at his MVP, openly. His MVP speech, Steve Kerr said, nine years ago, your mom didn't even think you could cut it in the NBA. Yep. Nine years ago, yep. you were quite, we were questioning if you could even make it in the yep. NBA. Shitty scouting now reports. Now you're two-time MVP champion. Yep. Gonna win another one this year if yep. everybody stays healthy. Oh, absolutely. Body was falling apart. Let's also point that out. Yeah. Ankle spraining every single time. I mean, this guy could not physically cut it. We looked at him like he just didn't have the physique to play in the NBA. Yeah. And through that, like they said, what is it? Uh, pressure makes diamonds or whatever it absolutely. is. Absolutely. You know, birth by birth by so pressure makes diamonds. I don't think LeBron. And I don't think, like Dwight Howard, I don't think a lot of these guys that have been highly touted their whole lives have experienced that sadness, that downfall, yeah. necessary to make a diamond. Jordan was not the first pick of the draft. No way. Jordan was cut off the high school team. Jordan was not the, uh, what was it, the All-American on his, his, his own roommate. He wasn't an All-American? Yeah, his own roommate was the All-American at North Carolina. Yeah. He had these things tear him down so when he built himself back up you know when they say when you break a bone it actually grows back stronger absolutely this motherfucker was broken 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 until he was literally unbreakable and i think that's what we're seeing with steph his unbreakable will to go zero for ten yes. Charlemagne, and then fucking score 17 out of 19 points yes. It's unprecedented. It's to win. And see, and, 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 and lebron didn't have that he didn't get broken LeBron down was the enough nigga that had a big dick all through his life. Yep. But then he finally got with a bad bitch, the NBA, and she's like, you can't fuck, though. And you, except when you didn't you learn how to fuck. Dick, you had a big you dick. Can't fuck. Yeah, girl's been hopping on it this whole time, but so you, you got struck. You had to go get with D-Wade and Bosch to run a train on the girl just to make her come a couple exactly. times. Exactly, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now you're back in Cleveland with your big dick again <laughs> yeah. with these guys, Kyrie and Kev, trying yeah. to run a train on chick. But I don't think y'all gonna make her come this year, Let bro. Let me tell you something. It's going to be close. The way Cleveland nah. is playing right now is nobody, no team in the league, not even the Warriors, are hitting as many threes per game as Cleveland. Dude, Cleveland is gelling right at the right time. I'll say this. Mm -mm. Cleveland and Warriors, that finals, could go down. If both teams keep playing at the levels they're playing, 
could go down as the greatest finals ever. No, I'm saying it right now. Five games. No, I'm saying it right now. Five games at the most. Listen, Kyrie matches up well with Steph. LeBron, in the Draymond position, is more talented than Draymond. Clay is more talented than J.R. Smith. After, absolutely. Kevin Love is is more talented than, you know, Harrison Barnes or whoever you want to put at the four. Yeah, but not in that system. It's Golden State's system that makes Harrison Barnes better than Kevin Love. Look, will fair. make Draymond, oh, Draymond won't be better than LeBron. Fair. But Draymond will be able to defend LeBron. Dude, Draymond's not better than LeBron, but Draymond, in terms of what he offers the team, yeah. it's the closest that there is to LeBron. He's not yeah. better. He's not better because he can't create his own shot the way LeBron can. But in terms of passing, rebounding, defense, and his ability to hit the open three, are 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 close. Y'all take we taking Golden State for granted for two reasons. Number one, we don't respect greatness in this era like we used to. Oh no, 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 no. and number two, because of Steph Curry sneakers. Oh, no, no. He, that we're, that's the, I'm ta- that we're taking this shit for granted. Seventy three and nine dude, dude. have not lost a back to back game all year. They should win. They're not losing three Look, games in listen, a seven game series. They should win. They should win. They should win. I'm not saying that they shouldn't win. All I'm saying is the way Cleveland's playing right now, the way they're moving the ball, the way they're trusting their teammates, the way that they're letting everybody get involved. When you see Kevin Love, who, remember, was a ghost yeah. during the regular season yeah. this year at times, yeah. and last year you didn't even fucking see him. When you see him dropping 27 in playoff games, when you see him going for 27 and 15, when you see LeBron facilitating and giving Kyrie the rock for you know for the last shot in, term, in certain games, letting Kyrie cook, when I see that kind of facilitation from LeBron... Which even goes to what we were saying earlier, which is maybe he likes likes to sh- you know give away a little bit more yeah, uh, yeah, responsibility. Yeah. When I see that kind of team play, I go, "This finals is gonna be five games. We might have to go, maybe six. Charlamagne, we might have to go to Cleveland. Nah. We might have to go to Cleveland for one. Yeah, that's that that goes back to uh, you wanting to be around greatness. I'm cool. You don't want to see that fucking finals? Are you kidding me? No, no, no. Are you I, I, kidding I mean, me? No, don't tell me. It's going to be great, but I'd rather watch it at home. Like, I don't... I want to go... I'm going to see Steph play at some point in my life. Yeah. But I don't care. No, I've don't seen care. Steph. Thank I want to see that fucking... You don't want to see... I don't think God's going to ever let Cleveland win because of the bad karma that J.R. Smith brings. So J.R. Smith is yeah, the reason why Boston Cleveland has him broken. Run? All the bartenders and scrippers' hearts he's broken? No, he's not. They're, those hearts were destroyed. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I... <laughs> This may sound Long crazy, before JR. but I feel like I feel like the LeBron era is over. We just haven't accepted it yet. We'll see. We haven't accepted it. This is Steph Curry's time, bro. Steph Curry is the greatest waffle-colored Negro ever. There has never been a light-skinned man mm-hmm. on any level better than Steph Curry at anything. Shout out to the Honorable, uh, what was his name? Mr. Farrakhan is beige Farrah like a, a Steph Curry. Nah, nah, Mr. nah, nah. Mr. Farrakhan is, is beige. Steph Curry puts on that yellow Golden State Warriors jersey, and you can't even hardly see the jersey sometimes. That's how yellow Dude, Curry is. Dude, let, let, let Mr. Farrakhan put on that jersey. It will match absolutely. Mr. Farrakhan might be lighter skinned. Hey, I love He honor- might be lighter skinned hey, than I, Steph. I, I love the Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan, man, but Steph jump shot is crazy. Steph jump shot is great, but okay, I Somebody know. tried to tell me Barack Obama, he's like, oh, he inspired black guys to be president. I'm like, that's cool and all. Yeah. But Steph Curry inspired people to wear Under Armour sneakers. Oh, that's th- a much bigger accomplishment huge, than being huge, the first black president. Huge. Under Armour sneakers, them shit is terrible looking. Listen, and motherfuckers is rocking them shit proudly I in know, the hood. Horrible. Looking at you like, yeah, nigga, yeah, you yeah, ain't yeah. up on these steps. <laughs> don't don't Under Armour sneakers look like the, the sneakers that the old guy at the basketball court wears? You know, you know what I mean? Like the ones he got at Models off the rack. That's what I'm telling you. Did yeah. you see the MVP? Sh- Hold on. We got another mic in there? A mic work? Yeah, get it. This is Angel, our sneaker guy. Angel's a sneaker plug. First of all, I don't want to say R because Angel never got me sneakers. Angel never got you no shit? Angel, why, shit. I got, why haven't I gotten anything, man? But, but listen, I need some shit. What do you got? Where's the hookup? You want to see what I got? I want to see what, what you got. got Can we before... Did you get him those... Uh, let me see these. Are these the flu games here? The fluies. The flu game is these, these too big for you, bro. You can't. I wear flip size twelve, the, man. This too. I'm gonna hold on to these. I got for a big second. These too big for I you, bro. I can't fuck. These too big. You can't do this. Listen, shit. listen, Angel. How hot are Under Armour sneakers right now? Super hot. Like they just did a comparison. He's doing better than LeBron. 
Jesus. Uh, he's doing yeah, better. Yeah, but LeBron Kobe, sneakers look yeah, like sneakers. fucking yeah. Megatron. Yeah, but, you know, for him to be a new person and taking over this quickly, yeah. unbelievable. And with an ugly sneaker. With an ugly sneaker. <laughs> okay. But they're making some dope colors, so everybody's going to be on it. Oh, yeah, and we've been wearing ugly sneakers for a very long no, time. These are like, like you said, Listen, like geriatric sneakers. Fair. They're not as ugly as Carmelo sneakers, oh, but yeah. they're ugly. Now, I mean, yeah. Carmelo's never had a good sneaker, and he doesn't True. deserve one. But what, maybe when he wins, he deserves Steph a, deserves a better sneaker, bro. Oh, God, Steph deserves a better sneaker. That yes, sneaker they had absolutely. by the MVP trophy looked disgusting. Oh, he horrible, needs, He horrible. needs like an Iron yeah. Man upgrade yeah. on that sneaker. Yes. yes. Let Tony oh, Stark, Let design, Tony Stark yeah. You need Elon Musk. You need Elon Musk to come in and design that fucking sneaker. Because whoever they got designer is disgusting it's right disgusting, now. disgusting, man. But I bought True. him. I'm not going to lie. I bought him. For what? Though. To help my jumper. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because my they're ankle is ball. fucked there up. You go. They're good for ball. No, they're not they're, good for ball. Because really? I couldn't put no, my I orthotics in. I got 70 year old oh. feet, so I need to do a lot of extra shit. I need to be. I need to build my own foot. Like I got a whole Tony Stark <laughs> thing. Like I got ankle braces, everything. But uh, this sneaker right here is a beautiful sneaker. Me personally, these don't fit me well. Uh, they're huge. Not it's a shit big. Comfortable. It's a big shoe. It's just a big shoe, so I can't wear them with jeans. It just don't fucking look right. But it's a beautiful. That's Classic. a beautiful shoe. Yeah. Here's the thing about Under Armour that shocks me. These guys went on a fucking tear, right? They signed Steph. Steph becomes the great. Yo, Under Armour might be. Under Armour might be the greatest. Under Armour might be the good luck charm. You think so? They signed Steph, True. right? They signed Steph. The guy wins two MVPs. Yeah. He becomes the greatest player in currently in playing basketball, right? Yeah. They first person, I think, major person they signed is Tom Brady. Yeah. Right? Cam Newton. Then Cam, Cam, Cam has one of the greatest seasons of quarterback history, one of the greatest seasons, uh, North Carolina Panthers, the greatest yeah. Car Panther season yeah. in history. Who else they got? They got Jordan Spieth for golf. Right. He's the best golfer in the world. Who yeah. else? That's all I remember. They got a few. I think they got I mean, a few they got more. A few, but all those I'm saying are known. is they keep on signing the best motherfucker in every sport. How do they get lucky? Like they signed Cam before he became the most dominant quarterback in the league. Maybe God says, look. If you sacrifice looks, your feet, yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's humility. It's humility. You, you sacrifice. They're being humble. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because yes, it's a sneaker ego. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean. You're it's, absolutely it's, right. I've had a conversation with with some some agents who players were mm -hmm. willing to take less money just to get that Nike sign. Oh, of course. So if somebody yeah. like Steph says, you know what, God, I'll take the ugly sneaker. I'm happy with this blessing. Nobody else wanted me. God rewards it. Yeah, because they said Steph went into a meeting one time, and when he walked in there, they still had the PowerPoint presentation from Kevin Durant. Yes. They didn't even change the name. They was like... Mm -hmm. So that's arrogance. That's, exactly. I, yeah, I so think what that's happened arrogance. to Master P's career? Because Master P had a disgusting sneaker. He, he had an all-time... Well, maybe that's the no ultimate company. humility. It wasn't through a company. It's a little different. The fact that... Because you know how many NBA players would throw their nose up to Under Armour? Yo, you know what? Yeah. You might be onto some shit. That's the only one. Who else represents Under Armour? Ready? Oh no. Oh, NBA players? Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know. I don't know like, else. Uh, but but, but there's, they have literally the best athlete in every single yeah. sport. It's amazing the tear that they went on. But here's something to your to your point. The most beautiful sneaker collection in history, in my opinion, outside of Michael Jordan's classics, is and for any Hardaway. Oh, cool. Yeah, the foams. Oh, I think not only yeah, the, the foams, foams, every single penny. When you look at an actual yeah. a sneaker yeah. collection for an athlete, yeah. Penny, top to bottom, is stacked. Penny got fired. Yeah. And, and what happened to fucking Penny? The sneakers were too good. He wasn't humble enough. His yeah. fucking knees gave up and his career was yeah. over. He wasn't humble enough, bro. Maybe it's a distraction. Maybe when you're playing ball and you're on the court and you're looking at people in the stands with your sneakers on, you ain't really paying attention, so you're moving wrong, so you might slip, sprain an ankle, Boom. fuck knees up a knee. Done. Steph don't yeah. have to look at the crowd because ain't nobody wearing them shit. And if they okay. are, he don't want to look at it. <laughs> That's it. He goes, fuck, I'm, like, I'm wearing no sneakers? Get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ, man. There could be something to this. See, Under Armour knows that. They know everyone's looking at Steph Curry, so they're like... We're going to give him a shoe, yeah. and he's going to market that shoe for us and make billions. Dude, I, bro, I think there's something to this. The nicer the sneaker, the weaker the knees. Kobe had disgusting sneakers his entire career. I agree. Within the last four sneakers, they got sexy. Why do you explain Jordan then? Wait for it. Okay. Last four sneakers got sexy. Okay. Blows his fuck shoulder gets fucked up. Blows the Achilles. Right. Then the what is it? The other thing he had uh, another shoulder. He had the other shoulder surgery. Right. Right. The so the the Kobe surgeries only started happening once the sneakers got hot. 
They were a lot more heavier. These are more lighter weight, so... They look these. better. Yeah, yeah. The, the Adidas ones were disgusting, right. right? They look like mosquitoes. You know the old ones? Yeah. There's something it's to something this to shit. It, bro. Name, to name, it. A, name a basketball player with nice sneakers right now. Don't tell me Chris Paul's sneakers are nice. No. Don't tell me Blake Griffin's are nice. Kevin Durant look all right. Kevin Durant. I like Katie's. Kyrie's. Kevin Durant. Okay, Kyrie's Kyrie. nice. Kyrie, Kyrie hasn't hasn't played a full season his entire career. No. Right? Kyrie's sneakers are nice. Kevin Durant just came off a foot surgery because he broke his foot. LeBron, he didn't break anything. Front. He broke his <clears throat> foot. He put that foot in a nice-ass sneaker, and that shit yeah. cracked. Right. Not these LeBrons, but the nines, I think they were. The nines, the old ones, yeah. This shit was dope. Those were dope. Those were really dope, but then the Agree new with ones you, but they, what they did is they, they made up the new ones so ugly to balance it out because they didn't want to give him the karma. Because <laughs> the new ugly ones, <laughs> the new ugly ones look like a car accident. Have you ever yes, seen these sneakers? They look like it's, some transformer looking. Bro, they're fu- they're like disgusting. Construction boot looking. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. I agree. There's wow. something to this. I'm asking for ugly. I always wondered this as an NBA player. You think, like, when Kyrie is playing against somebody, like, how do you play against somebody when you're wearing their sneakers? Do you think that goes through your head That's a little ego. bit? Right. Like, man, fuck you. You got on my kicks, though. Yeah. 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 You, can't you wouldn't be it. doing that in my kicks, though. Exactly. Oh, you want to be like Kyrie, huh? Yeah. Right. Which one is they all that? You want to be like Kyrie. <laughs> Sing it with me. <laughs> like Kyrie. I want to be like Kyrie. <laughs> like, you would do that. You'd fuck with him. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I don't understand. Nick Young. Nick Young, needed to deserve, he deserves to have two sprained ankles for wearing Yeezys on the Bro, goddamn. I said the oh, same shit, shit bro. Who them shit is paper mache that? projects, bro. You got yeah, paper mache yeah, projects on your feet. Stop it. You wearing stockings. You wearing Christmas stockings for fucking basketball sneakers. And you wonder why the Lakers suck this year. Come on. That's why Kobe quick call me like man fuck that this nigga ain't yeah. easy to play ball with me. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker show up in penny loafers <laughs> listen man salute to my guy angel i guess we're about to wrap you. it up how you long know, how long is with how long we done oh it's, a, it's one story i wanted to tell All you right. know I, I i never told y'all this but one day i'm walking out the radio station me and wax mm-hmm. right and this guy it's like maybe Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, this guy runs by me. Like, as I'm walking out the door of the radio station, yeah. I see the guy jogging on the sidewalk. Yeah. He runs by me. As soon as I step out, the guy turns around and goes, Yo! And points at me. Comes running back. So, Wax is like, Of course, he sees yeah. he's Wax. Like, What's up? And the guy's like, Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want no problems. I don't want no problems. He's just like, yeah, I fuck with you, man. Yes, man. Me and my wife watch you all the time, man. You know? And I go, Oh, shit. I said, let's get a picture. And he goes, no, no, because you kill people. He go, you and Howard Stern, y'all kill people. I'm not taking a fucking picture with you. And I go, all right. I said, what you doing over here? He goes, I'm just, I'm, I'm over here shooting the movie. He goes, you know what? But I'm going to tell you the difference between you and Howard Stern. You get bitches. Then he looks around all crazy and goes, I mean, I mean, I mean, you get girls. And I go, yo, man, you should think about coming on the show one day. No, never. Paranoid. <laughs> and runs off. Who was it? Shy LaBeouf. Yeah. No. <laughs> I really swear, not. I promise to God. Bro. Shy right. LaBeouf. Shia is his Shia, name. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and he ran up on me so crazy, I couldn't, I'm like, Transformers. And I'm like, hold up. That's the first thing that went in my mind. I'm like, oh shit. This, this shit literally lasted 45 seconds to a minute. And he just, he, he, he ran by. I don't know how he spotted me coming out the door. Ran back. Said what he said. Screamed. She started screaming like, see how it never got no bitches. Then he goes, he looks around and goes, I mean, girls. And then I go, you should come on the show sometime. He goes, no. And he took off running. Yeah, he's on something. So he's out of his mind? No, nah, I think he, he was really, he was in jogging clothes and stuff. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say, he, I don't think he was out of his mind. Maybe he, he was in character. You know, some I, of these actors stay in character. Maybe, but I just thought that was a very interesting Can you tell story. the other story that happened when you recently walked out of the uh, the breakfast club? Oh, yes. Okay. This, 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 this was This was hailed. yesterday. First of all, before Colbert, I've told y'all this before. You can go back to old Brilliant Idiots podcast. Stop calling other men ugly, bro. Like, that shit is whack as fuck. Okay, and for the first time in a long time, unless you fuck men, yeah, unless like, you fuck you men, yeah, word up, unless so you much. fuck men, yeah. don't call me ugly. Yeah. If you, until, unless you can point gay. out yeah. a guy you find yeah. cute and attractive, <laughs> yeah. don't Who's call cute? me yeah. ugly. Yeah. ugly. Be about that life. If you take dick, you can call me ugly. Now, if you give dick, you can call me ugly. But if it. you're not sucking no dick, don't call me ugly. I don't give a fuck right. about your opinion on me. You never had a fucking cock in your jaws. Don't call me ugly. Yeah, fuck you. You never swallowed. So I'm walking out the station. 
And I, you know, it's fun. You know, we, you get it too, shows. When you out in the street, motherfuckers want to laugh with us, joke with us, snap. Yeah. So I'm walking. I see this dude on the phone. Dude's on the corner. He goes, "Oh, yo, that's Charlemagne." He goes, "Nigga, you ugly as shit in person, yo. You know, one of them young New York niggas. You ugly as shit in person." Hey, I go, "Word. What man you think is attractive?" <laughs> and so he go, no, I don't know, I don't know. So Wax is just staring at the motherfuckers. You know, Wax is just ready to kill somebody right now because he's going through a lot in his personal life. You know what I mean? So Wax is just looking at this motherfucker, and the guy goes, the fuck your man looking at? He ugly too, right? <laughs> Whoa. Wait for it. Right? Wait for it. So Wax is like, who the fuck you talking to? So of course, Wax is going right at him. I'm like, Wax, chill. The guy's like, no, I'm just saying. You know, no, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, you cute, you cute. Hey, yo. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, you broke out the game. Out of him. This guy started oh, yeah. moonwalking so yeah. fucking crazy. Nah, but crazy. the funniest part is the guy called Wax cute and Wax stopped going after him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, that's all he I'm wanted. Gay. He just <laughs> wanted a little gun. I told you I'm not ugly. The dude goes, yo, 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 what's up? Yo, I'm good. Yo, he goes, yo, 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 you cute, you cute, you cute. He goes, hey. yo, Charlamagne, yo, come on, man. You know what funny is. You, 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 you got your man wallet. I'm like, that shit. Wow, scared him gay. Scared him gay. Yo, son, <laughs> son. So if yeah. Wax is ever coming yeah. to beat your ass, just call that man handsome. So I got, so I, and, and, then, and so when Wax, I told you, I said, see, you can't, why you can't be going around calling people fucking ugly. That's my pet peeve. And I know that being that's my pet peeve, y'all going to do it more. But somebody going to slap the shit at you, okay? Yeah. And we're going to... But they got to learn that lesson. You got to let people learn their own lessons, man. You can't guide them, bro. You know, told, what is it? Don't give I, people fish. Teach them how. I told Wax, I said, yo, if you'd have slapped that dude, you know you would have got arrested for a hate crime? Wow. Because you slapped a gay man. He wasn't even gay. <laughs> That's what he funny. called me ugly, and then he called you cute. So yo. when the police come and be like, "Why'd you smack him?" Yo, he called me ugly. Yo, that's <laughs> fucking hilarious, yo. Yo, so you mad he didn't want you? Yo, that's what you should do. Yo, next next time you're about to be in a fight, when the guy starts beating your ass while he's beating your ass, be like, "Yo, you mad? Good looking, you yo. Cute, yo. You, you got cute. a great jawline. My handsome as cute. fuck. I want to hey, suck your dick. Yeah. Yo, you're gonna get all." the Word. money in the lawsuit. It's a hate crime, bro. Hey, it's a hate crime. Yeah, Listen, well, imagine it. you're beating someone up and they start saying, yo, your hands mad soft, bro. <laughs> you got great ass <laughs> skin, bro. <laughs> you got, you got, yo, what'd you just say? <laughs> Damn, yo, fuck. Your neck is, your neckline is plunging. <laughs> Listen, we're getting the fuck out of here, man. As always, watching Common Sense every Friday at 11 p.m. on MTV2. Yep. Thank you. We appreciate the support. So listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a bunch of dumb motherfuckers who don't know shit, a couple idiots, you're right too. That's why it's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>